All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply. This is part uh, six of our bag making series on the overnight bag. Um, we're gonna call it sewing the bits and pieces because last video we prepped all these pieces and got them all stuck together here and uh, just stuck together with tape and marked where all the sew lines would be. And here we're just going to sew a bunch of them together. Um, we kind of started this on the last video, but then um, came time to open the store that morning. So folks were walking in and stuff. And I broke um, my thread as I was sewing through this zipper, um, which brought up some interesting uh, things that I f f failed to talk about. Um, <clears throat> especially when using a sewing machine, when you're sewing through a zipper, um, go super slow. Allow the the needle to find its way in between the teeth of the zipper and um you know it's, it's a quick way to m mess up a sewing machine break a needle something like that to just go you know full speed through a metal object that if you go slow and you use your hand wheel over here and you maybe even have to wiggle your project a little bit so that your needle can find its way between the zipper teeth all right now we put stops in this zipper so we actually we could take and separate it as much as possible, and that'll uh, that'll help that needle make its way uh, down through there. And I should have done all of that before we started uh, sewing the zipper together, but I was in a hurry because I um, I was trying to get it done before the store opened and folks were coming in, and I uh, I apologize for that. That's 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 not something I should do. I shouldn't rush through these things. So I'm going to separate that end. I'm going to separate this end, and we'll continue sewing this zipper. And uh, then we'll sew some of the other small parts of the bag. And um, I'll just be pausing the video as I go from one part to another and everything. And that way you can see a little bit of all the pieces and how I sew them, how I position them in the machine, and, and things like that. So... All right. My machine is on, but I've got my uh, light moved out of the way because it makes it too bright for the video anyway. So um, first thing I'm going to do, get that thread in there like it needs to be. Okay. First rule of using a sewing machine, check your bobbin. Nothing like getting five stitches into a project and realizing your the bobbin is empty. We've got a good amount of bobbin there. We'll probably be able to do everything in this video with that bobbin. All right. So I broke my thread. So to 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 to, uh, to splice that, I just need to start two or three stitches back and uh, work my way through there. Um, I'm just going to uh, use my hand wheel and find all that positioning, and um, we'll get there. There's my original hole. I also need to make sure that the sewing machine is set on the same settings it was last time I used it, which it is not. So I've got to adjust my stitch length a little bit to make sure that, uh, there we go. Now we're right on with our, our last stitches. Um, the machine will find all the same holes as, uh, as it, as long as the stitch length is set the same on the machine. Um, this one's not. We sewed some other projects uh, in between the last video and this one. All right, I'm almost to the point of where my broken thread was. I'm going to go ahead and hand walk this across that zipper. All right, now we're ready to just go right down the other side. So here we go. When doing a curved uh, area with a sewing machine, try to do all of your turning while the needle is down, and that will help keep your stitches um, uh, uniform uh, width. Or length, I guess it is. 
All right, so now here I am on the long stretch, and I'm just going to kind of kick it into gear. And... The sewing machine wants to go straight, so all I have to do is hold my hand to where the material uh, feeds through the way that the machine wants it. I'm not using my edge guide or anything like that. I'm just running a straight line. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it when we uh, started the zipper sewing in the other video, but you need to take your zipper and you don't want to sew where the zipper is because it'll create a little bit of a bubble in the, uh, the zipper tape. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my zipper down past where my sewing machine is so that I can complete this. By the way, everybody, happy uh, Independence Day. I'm, uh, Hoping that I can get this video done today so that anybody that's off this weekend and has a long weekend might be able to work on their bag. the other end so we're going to go nice and slow around it and uh, again we'll make sure that we uh, don't damage anything going through the zipper area and we'll try to do all of our turns while the needle is down. at the zipper so I'm going to use my hand wheel a little bit get through that area all right went through pretty flawlessly there so now I've just got to complete my stitch go back around to where my stitches began and I'll uh, stitch over my first three or four And uh, that'll lock it all in, and we can move on to the next piece. There we go. That one is complete. Pull my little threads off, and there's a piece actually ready for final assembly. All right, we already sewed one of these together, so I'll save the rest of them for uh, off camera. Let's see what else we got. There's a pair of scissors I've been missing for four days since the last video came out. All right, so the little uh, support pieces at the bottom. Real easy to sew. I mean, they're just uh, little rectangles. So we'll power through one of these right quick. I'm gonna start, I don't like starting any stitches in a corner if I, if I don't have to. So I'm gonna start about an inch away from the corner there and uh, gotta hold my thread for the first couple of stitches. And now we're just gonna sew it down. I'm just keeping the uh, right side of my presser foot about a 16th of an inch away from the edge there. Um, Again, this thing wants to sew in a straight line, so I'm not worried about trying to move my edge guide around all these pieces while I, while I do them. Wasn't quite to the corner like I thought it was, so I'm going to reposition it a little bit there. 
Um, same thing when you do a 90 degree corner, it's just like when you're going around a rounded edge, you want to do your turning, you want that needle to go all the way down and then just come up a tiny bit. And um, then when you make your, you just lift your presser foot slightly and uh, turn your material. And when you do that, it will make sure that you don't skip that stitch. Um, a lot of the time, if you don't pay attention to where your needle is, then when you go to lift or to, to continue on, you'll find that your, your uh, bobbin, uh, your shuttle hook did not catch your top thread. And now here you are um, with a hole that has no thread in it right there in the corner. And that's no fun. Almost done with one of these uh, rectangles here. first hole so again we'll go over the first couple of stitches and we'll pull this piece out and move on to the handles um, there are three more of these little support pieces that need to be sewn but again I'll do that off camera so that this doesn't turn into a four hour long video of you just watching me quietly sew and uh, listening to my music in the background. All right, so handles. We, um, if you'll remember, we marked little bitty marks up there on the handles. I think we did like 11 inches up or something crazy like that. Um, that's where our sewing has to stop. So, um, I always do all my sewing where the presser foot, which is a, a left presser foot on this machine, um, I always do all my sewing where that presser foot's on the meatiest part of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna sew down this outside of this handle, and then I'll flip it around and sew back up the inside of this handle. Um, and then I'll do the exact same over here. I'll start with the right side, the inside, um, I guess you could say, and, uh, sew down it and then flip it around and, and go back up the other side, paying very close attention to where my tiny little marks are because if one of these stitch lines goes all the way up here and the other one's down here, it just won't look right. And we like it to look right, okay? So here we go. Um, these are just straight strap handles, um, you know, that we're putting on this bag here. Uh, we could very, very easily um, do a nice fancy rolled handle and stuff like that, but this bag's kind of an introduction bag. Oops, luckily that was in the right position. Uh, this bag's kind of an introduction to bag making, so I'm, I'm not trying to get crazy fancy. We'll do that in later videos as we uh, progress, you know. I, I look at a lot of my videos and stuff as kind of a skill builder thing. Like, we'll start with the basics and work our way up to the hard stuff. And I think the uh, amount of skiving we did in this video is probably enough of the hard stuff for this project. Um, I, I'm sure I talked about it. Um, you can hand sew this bag. Um, very, very possible. It's not difficult. It's just extremely time consuming. So, um, you know, to those that only do hand sewing, hey, kudos for you. I, you know, whatever your reasons, if you're just not ready to buy a machine, I get it. Um, I hand sewed for years before buying a machine. 
And now that I own all these machines, I still hand sew quite a bit because I kind of enjoy it. Um, some people, it's part of their marketing that, hey, this is hand stitched. Good on you. I hope you're charging accordingly for your, your time, though. Because, you know, when I'm selling sewing machines to folks, I have to remind them that, yeah, it's an investment. But if you think about it, let's say you make belts. You can make two belts in the time that it used to take you to hand sew one of the belts. So now, you know, with a sewing machine, um, you, you really increase your product, product production. Um, at the top of this stitch, I did the, my, my three stitches back and then went forward. At the bottom of this stitch, I don't need to lock it in because that's actually going to be inside the seam of the bag. So I don't need to worry about locking it in. And then as we go the exact opposite direction here, same thing. I will not lock in the bottom of the stitch, but uh, when I get up to the top, I will. Now, if your pocket is really thick, um, you know, at the top where you folded it over, this one is not. Uh, but if it was, it could be kind of difficult to get over that little area right there and your machine could hang up a little bit. So just be cautious of that. If you need to adjust your presser foot a little bit and use your knee or, uh, or you, you know, whichever machine you have, it might not be a knee lift. But um, I've gotten to where I can work this knee while I'm working my, my, my uh, um, the go pedal. Um, I've gotten to where I can work those in conjunction pretty well. So when I know that I'm coming to a spot like that, I can kind of lighten my presser foot up just a little bit and um, help it walk across something like that. So here we go. We're going to sew right back up this side here. Um, I am holding that top thread down. I'm just holding it down against the machine um, and that'll help it to get the stitches started nicely. kind of anxious to see how this bag will turn out. I haven't made this style of bag out of a two-tone leather like this yet, um, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to look really nice. And uh, yeah, my problem is I have a bunch of bags sitting around now because all the ones I've built for practice or for videos or, you know, things like that. I may actually have to sell a few of them. Um, this bag, again, it's kind of an introduction, so we're not going to line it, but I will soon do a video on doing lining, uh, like cloth lining and binding. Um, when you do a cloth liner, here we are right up here at the top, so I'm going to one more stitch and then back stitch. Uh, when you do a cloth liner, you can't leave the exposed edges of the cloth in there because they'll fray and it just won't look nice. Um, I've got a bag over there that I did take the time to do the binding and all that. And uh, I mean, it turned out really nice, but it is very time consuming compared to this. And uh, there's a lot, a lot more steps involved. Um, definitely not for the, uh, the very beginner, but it's, it's not difficult. It just, none of this stuff is difficult. It just takes time and practice. All right, so there's one side of my handle. Uh, I'm gonna do the, ex the other one the exact same way. I'm gonna go down to where my, my presser foot is always on the meaty part of the, the leather. I never want my, my, my side presser foot over on the edge, okay? I always want it towards the center to where it's not gonna accidentally fall off. You see people stitching on um, a lot of projects, they try to hide it, but you can see their stitch is nice and straight, nice and straight, and then all of a sudden, bam, eighth of an inch to the left or right. And I guarantee you what they did is they had that presser foot over on the edge of the leather and they, uh, they ran off the leather. Happens all the time. I see it all the time on social media and stuff um, with, with people's projects. And you can ruin a gorgeous project by having stitching that's not uh, nice and straight and, and correct. Okay. So I'm going to pause this camera and uh, sew up a whole bunch more of these bits and pieces. When I come back, we are going to assemble, affix the zipper strip to the top gusset piece right here. So 
we will affix those two and sew that down. And then we're going to be ready for final assembly, which will be the very next video. And that will be done this morning. All right. So what was a half a second in time for you was uh, maybe 30 minutes for me. Um, probably not that much. Anyway, we have sewn all the panels uh, onto the bottom piece here. So that's complete. We showed the handles on one side of the bag. We sewed the handles on the other side of the bag. And we sewed all of our, uh, our D-ring hangers onto the zipper, uh, zipper piece. And it must have been a good time because my pipe is now done. So um, now what we have to do is place our zipper strip on here. All right, so first thing we need to do is trim off the excess zipper in the back. I do leave a couple of teeth past, um, do leave a couple of the teeth past uh, where we sewed and everything just to make sure that like when you're, when you've got the, when you are looking at the completed bag, you can't see down inside of it uh, through the zipper. That, that's not good. Um, so I'm going to just cut that off. Again, if you're using your good scissors, make sure that you get in between the teeth and you're not trying to cut a brass tooth with a, a good pair of scissors like this. Um, it's, uh, you know, these scissors are not cheap, I know. Um, but you can cut the zippers with them. You just have to cut in between the teeth. So it's always easiest to cut the zipper if it's separated. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get me some double-sided tape and uh, cut these strings off here. I'm going to go get me some double-sided tape and um, that one's just stuck to tape. And I'm going to line both the sides of, uh, of this strip with the double-sided tape and then I'm going to lay it down right where it belongs uh, in between the D-hangers. Um, and then we'll just sew around the perimeter of it. So let me pause this while I tape it up right quick, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and, uh, and stick her down. All right, so got some tape on the back of this. Go ahead and peel that uh, the paper layer off. I'm gonna start my day's pile in the floor here that I can sweep up with all my uh, cut threads. All right, and I am going to very carefully lay this into position okay i want to make sure that this is nice and straight normally i'd be over there at the other table but i don't want to move the uh, camera and all that stuff um it needs to be centered between the um between the d hangers and then it also needs to be even uh evenly spaced like how much of it comes past the d hangers uh which is, with the pattern the very bottom of the actual zipper is pretty much even with the bottom of the, 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 the D hangers. Um, so I'm just going to kind of tack that down with my fingers very, very lightly. And then I'll turn it over and make sure that that zipper is right smack in the middle of all the, uh, the, the cut open for it. Okay. My phone's ringing. I'm sorry. I have to pause. All right. Sorry about that. So, the zipper is right in the middle of that cut. That's exactly where I want it. So we're going to sew this sucker together. I do need to check my bobbin again because I know it was getting low. Yeah, better change that out. Just in case. Yep, that would not have been enough. Fresh bobbin ready to load. I always keep one winding while one's using. And that way I know that I can not have downtime to change them out.
All right. Bobbin change is done. Now I got to put my uh, my other bobbin on the winder right quick. Ready to go. All right. Just like all the others, I'm going to sew it. Uh, with the edge of my center foot being toward the edge of the uh, the leather, and that way my presser foot is on the meaty part of the leather here. And we're gonna go all the way around it, just like we have everything else, and there's not really a reason to have to film all that. Um, real basic, we're gonna go all the way around, come back and uh, just go over our first couple of stitches. So I'll pause it. When we come back, We'll just recap what we did on this video, and uh, that'll be it for this one. And um, the next video is going to be starting to do our final assembly on this. So I'm excited. All right. So we got everything sewn together. Um, here's what uh, final product looks like there with the uh, bag uh, gusset with the zipper and everything. And I said we were going to do a recap, but we're not, or a uh, you know finish this video up. But we actually need to do one more thing. We need to put the D-rings into the D-ring holders. All right. And I grabbed everything I need except the actual flipping D-rings. Two seconds. Okay. So I now have. Four brass D-rings, four brass rivets. Um, I've just got a, a one-inch uh, half-round punch here. Um, rivet setter, ball-peen hammer and cutter, and a hole punch that corresponds with my rivets. All right. So what we need to do is make a nice little uh, strap for the 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 the, the, the D-rings to go through. And I use the half round punch for this because it's a lot easier to put the um, put the uh, the leather down in there if they're not flat and square. So I want to cut this just long enough that it will. I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom of the D ring hanger area here. I'll explain that as I'm doing it. All right, so we'll see if this is about the right size here. So when I do this, I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom of the D-ring hanger because then I can't get that D-ring nice and tight up against the opening there, okay? Um, this one's still just a teeny bit too long, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit more off. Once I figure out its final size, I will use it to gauge the other three that I need to cut and um, make sure that they're all identical. Um, all I'm using here is some scrap left over from our handle. It's just one inch wide strap that's uh, anywhere from four to six ounces or so. You don't want it too heavy because you don't want it to really bulk up that, but you don't want it too light because you want it to be able to, 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 to handle the weight of the bag. All right. So if I put a D ring in this and I put this down into the, the slot on the D ring hanger, it will not reach the bottom of the, the sew line there, and that's that's perfect, okay? So this is what I'm talking about right here. It is so hard to see with that dark leather. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to use this one to mark the, uh, the sizes for the others, and then I'm going to skive the tips of them just a little bit because that will help them get down into the, the little slot there, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the other four. I'm going to walk over there to the skyver and hit them, just run the tips through them right quick. Um, and uh, then we'll insert these and I'll show you how I rivet them down. When I'm doing copies uh, like this, you know, make, using one to measure the others, it's very, very important that I use the original one every single time. Don't use a copy of a copy of a copy because every every time it'll get a tiny bit bigger or something. And it'll be, um, 
you know, whatever, whatever the flaw is, it will continue to um, uh, exaggerate itself between the copies. All right. So this is my original one, and I need to make two more of them now. Let me grab a little bit larger of a punch. This thing is just slightly over one inch. Uh, it should be one inch, but it's not. Uh, I must not have gauged it right when I when I cut the strap out. So as opposed to trimming all those, I'll just get a bigger punch. It's okay if your rounds uh, aren't perfectly centered um, because, again, it's down inside the, uh, the, the bag and you won't see them, so it's okay. All right, I'm going to go run these through the skyver right quick, and when I come back, we will rivet one of them. All right, I just skived the little tips of them so that they'll fold over a little easier and slide into those uh, those slots. All right, so I'll put a D-ring in one of them, make sure it's nice and even here. Um, it could even help to, uh, there's my scissors, could even help to put a little piece of double-sided tape in there to uh, help you keep it closed while you're pushing it down into the bag. is so I need to take something and kind of stick it in there and just widen that hole out a little bit make it nice and, and ready to uh, to receive this thing um, so I'm just gonna use my little scratch all here and I'll poke it down in there being careful not to poke through the the fabric the, the, the leather the material um, stretch that out a little bit and then this thing is gonna push in there it's gonna be nice and snug but that's good you want it nice and snug. You want it. You don't want it to have a bunch of room. You don't want it to flop around. You just want it to be nice and snug. All right. I'm going to get that as close to the camera as I can. There's what we're looking at right there. Looks nice and clean this way. Um, you don't have a bunch of, uh, you know, if you just folded this thing in half and then riveted it or sewed it to the bag, it just wouldn't look as nice. So, I'm going to take my little hole punch here, and I'm going to send it through every single layer of leather. I'm going to do it uh, roughly a half inch down from the slot, and then centered, of course, left to right. Send it all the way through all that. Come back and grab my uh, one of my brass rivets and stick it in there. Now, I need uh, to change over from a cutting surface to a tooling type surface, so I'll grab my scrap of rock here. Um, and this is this brass rivet is much like a copper rivet. Well, it's exactly like a copper rivet. It's just made of brass instead. So what we have to do is we take and put our little washer that I can't pick up because I chew my fingernails. Um, put our little uh, washer over it. We take a, a setting tool. It's just um, I mean it's just a solid steel tool with a with a hole drilled in it, so it'll fit over the um, so it'll fit over the um, the post of the, the rivet. Okay. Use a mallet. Knock that sucker down there nice and tight. Now I'm going to use my clippers. The problem with brass is it's a lot harder to cut than the, the, the than the brass ones or the copper ones are. So I am going to have to grunt a little bit here. Got that chopped off. I left about an eighth of an inch. All right. With that eighth of an inch, I'll take my ball peen hammer. And I'm just going to start flattening it out. And all you're doing is mushrooming that post over the washer so that um, the washer can't come off of it. Now this is on the inside of the bag. I don't need to make it look pretty, but I do want to run my finger over it and make sure there's no jagged edge or anything that could could catch anything and stuff like that you don't want that to be 
uh, rough and jagged and, and ruin something nice that was held inside the bag. All right. I will do the other three exactly like that. But there's what it looks like on the outside. And there's what it looks like on the inside. A little closer. All right. So there it is. Um, in this video, we sewed all the little bits and pieces onto the big bits and pieces. And um, I'm going to, uh, before I start the next video, I will rivet the rest of these into place. Um, and then we are going to start our final assembly, finally, on our bag. And um, it's going to be great. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply. And uh, this has been part six of our bag making series on the overnight bag.